go. The scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 5, verses 1 through 15. Listen now for the word of God. After this, there was a Jewish festival, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, near the Sheep Gate in the north city wall, is a pool with the Aramaic name Bethsaida. It had five covered porches, and a crowd of people who were sick, blind, lame, and paralyzed sat there. A certain man was there who had been sick for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there, knowing that he had already been there a long time, he asked him, Do you want to get well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I don't have anyone who can put me in the water when it is stirred up. When I am trying to get to it, someone else has gotten in ahead of me. Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat and walk. Immediately the man was well, and he picked up his mat and walked. Now that day was the Sabbath. The Jewish leaders said to the man who had been healed, It is the Sabbath. You aren't allowed to carry your mat. He answered, The man who made me well said to me, Pick up your mat and walk. They inquired, Who is this man who said to you, Pick it up and walk? The man who had been cured didn't know who it was, because Jesus had slipped away from the crowd gathered there. Later, Jesus found him in the temple and said, See, you have been made well. Don't sin anymore in case something worse happens to you. The man went and proclaimed to the Jewish leaders that Jesus was the man who had made him well. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. This week we're starting a new series for spring called Resurrection Now. Those of us who are tuning in this week after Easter know that resurrection is not just for one Sunday a year. During our series, Father Richard Rohr will help us to explore how resurrection can be something we experience in our daily lives. But first, we need to take notice of obstacles to resurrection. And so our theme today is running from resurrection. Now, you may already know that I am not much of a runner, but I do know a few running jokes. How did the barber win the cross-country race? He took a shortcut. Why did the Scandinavian win the uh, cross-country race? He started near the finish line. What do you get when you race behind a car? Exhausted. And what do you get when you race in front of a car? Tired. I don't know about you, but this pandemic is making me tired and exhausted. I'm having trouble concentrating for any length of time. Usually we take our health and wellness for granted, but now we are intensely paying attention to it, much like the people at the Pool of Bethsaida in today's scripture reading. People with various physical impairments gathered around the waters of a therapeutic pool in Jerusalem. It's called Bethsaida, a name that indicates that this is a place of mercy, blessing, and healing. Individuals who were sick, blind, lame, and paralyzed have come to this pool hoping to experience the healing properties of the water. One man desperately wants to get in the water. He has been sick for 38 years, and Jesus finds him lying beside the pool. Jesus asks him, Do you want to get well? Now, instead of simply saying yes, the man describes all the obstacles to his healing. He explains that he doesn't have anyone to help him get into the water, and other people are cutting in ahead of him. Jesus tells him to rise. Just get up and walk, he says. And at that moment, the man becomes well. He, be he picks up his mat and he begins walking. And as he moves around the pool, 
some of the religious leaders criticize him for carrying his mat on the Sabbath. He tells them that the man who healed him told him to do it, and he identifies Jesus as the one who healed him. This story of healing is a story of resurrection in daily life. It's about meeting Jesus in our time of need. He comes to us when we feel discouraged and overwhelmed, and he helps us to find power to rise above our circumstances. I think this story is about spiritual healing just as much as it is about physical healing. When Jesus asks the man if he wants to get well, the man reveals that his primary focus is on the impediments to getting well, and he reports all the various reasons he cannot get well. Sometimes we develop a similar state of mind. Richard Rohr says, Have you ever noticed in your own thought patterns, if there is something negative or problematic, you will always wrap your mind around that immediately? This week I was watching an old uh, episode of The Rockford Files. Jim is at a nice French restaurant with a date, and he orders a bottle of wine for another party who helped him get a table. Despite his grateful gesture, Jim spends the whole evening complaining to his date that the recipients are not drinking the wine. While obsessing about his gift not being appreciated, Jim ignores the woman he's with and ruins the date. I think we all are tempted to focus on something negative at times. I know I am. For example, I enjoy kayak camping a great deal. I love being able to load up the boat with gear for several days and then launch for an adventure in the wilderness. The trouble I have is worrying that something might happen to the boat. It was really bad during an expedition uh, in the Arctic Refuge about 10 years ago. Each day I would pull up the kayak out of the water onto the bank and set up camp along the Congacut River. I could hear the endlessly flowing water from inside the tent, which usually is a very relaxing sound. But one night I just could not relax and go to sleep. I was obsessing that Maybe I didn't pull the boat up far enough, and all I could think of was the possibility that the river might rise and wash the boat away from me downstream. I just could not let go of that negative image, and my only peace of mind was getting out of the tent to make sure the boat was still there, and then hiking it up a few feet more onto dry ground. Richard Rohr argues that we are attracted to the negative. He says, think of the negative commentaries that people write nonstop for years on end about their first wife or the job they lost. He says, they really do dig a pit for themselves that is dug so deep. Rohr points to neurological research that confirms his interpretation. He says, the neural grooves that you overuse become myelinated, defined, strengthened, and the ones you don't use die. He explains that if you never use the neural groove of mercy and you don't practice mercy, then at some point you don't know how to be merciful anymore. He says, that's why most old people are, as we say, set in their ways. Not much fun to be around if they've only kept affirming the same obsessive thinking. This week, one woman told me about the rut of negative thinking that she's experiencing. She said, right now, I just don't see the light at the end of the tunnel that we're in. 
She wonders how long the shutdown will last and how it will affect her kids and her family's income. She said, I'm doing my best to have faith, but there are times when this all seems hopeless. I want to affirm that these are real feelings. Like our friend and many of you, I feel the weight of what's happening too. I feel the anxiety of what we don't know and what we cannot control. It may be worth pointing out that the person who shared her sense of hopelessness this week is someone who also shared signs of resurrection last week. And it goes to show how difficult it is to maintain a positive attitude. Rohr puts it this way, joy is not easily sustained. We lose it in a moment. He says, resurrection is not our natural state. It's always a gift from God, but a gift from God that we have to assent to and choose and make our own. Sometimes we are attracted to the negative and we let our fears, hurts, and limitations define us. But Jesus offers spiritual healing. He says, do you want to get well? He challenges us to choose hope, to believe that a new life is possible and to live in a way that helps make that real. As we confront our obsessive negative thinking, we will find ourselves in a place of mercy, blessing, healing, and hope. Amen.